Hello and welcome to the statistics session on the topic of principles of counting, multiplication, permutation, and combination. So there are three counting formulas that are useful in determining the number of outcomes in an experiment. This is multiplication, combination, and permutation. So let's go through the first one. The multiplication formula indicates that if there are m ways of doing one thing and n ways of doing another thing, then there are m times n ways of doing both. So the formula is m times n. Let's see this quick example. Fatima has 20 abayas and 12 shaylas. How many abaya and shayla arrangements does she have? Like how many different outfits can she have? So we have 20 abayas and from this 20 abayas, Fatima can only wear one at a time. So she can pick one. And from this shayla, she has 12 and she can only pick one at a time. So how many sets of one can she have? According to this formula, we multiply 20 times 12 and that gives us, or that gives Fatima a total of 240 different outfits, arrangements that she can have. So she had two groups, a group of abayas and a group of shaylas, and she's choosing one from each of them every time. Okay, combination. A combination is the number of ways to choose R objects from a group of N objects without regard to order. The formula is n combination r, where n here, n is the total number of objects and r is the number of objects selected. So when we have a combination, we're going to have a big group of items and that's going to be the n. This is our big group of items. And we're going to make a smaller group from this bigger group. So R is going to be the smaller group that we're going to make from the big group N. Okay, now what do we do with this formula here? How do we do it? Um, so for our, so for um, simplicity purposes, we're going to use the formula uh, from the calculator straight. If you see in your calculator, you have here NCR. The combination formula. To get to NCR, you need to press Shift. So Shift NCR or Shift Taxim Division. Okay, so let's see this one quick formula. There are 12 students in the classroom. The teacher must pick five students among the 12 to send a group of representative students to a conference. How many different groups are possible? So the teacher has a total of 12 students. So this is the big group N. And from this big group, the teacher needs to pick five. How many different groups of five will they have? It doesn't matter how the smaller group is organized. So you have N, C, R. We, we said that it's 12, C, five. Okay, so if we go back to our calculator, how you would do it, you first, you know, the formula is 12, C, 5. You first press 12. Then you press shift, right? Shift, taxim or division. Then you press the number 5. Enter or equal. Equal. So what you should get is the number 792. If you were by mistake to do it uh, opposite, if you in the calculator, instead of pressing here 12, you do a five, and instead of doing a five here, you press 12, you will get an error. Because basically we, what you're doing is five C12. You cannot make a smaller group of 12 from five. The calculator will give you an error. Okay, so if that happens to you, then it should be a flag to tell you that you have um, flipped the numbers. So you should need you need to go back and do 12 C5. Basically, you're telling the calculator, make combinations from 12, a group of 12, and get five items from this group. 
how many groups of five can you have? And the answer is 792. All right. The last counting rule is permutation. A permutation is any arrangement of R objects selected from N possible objects, just like we had in combination, but the order of arrangement is important in the permutations. So how you organize the items in R in your smaller group is important. And the formula is NPR. Again, N is a big group that we're going to have in our exercises, and R is a smaller group that you're making from a big group. Okay, so now, how is permutation different from combination? Well, we know that the arrangements A, B, C, and B, A, C are different permutations. So every time the, the smaller groups, how the items are organized inside R, every time you change them around, it's a different group. For example, let me give you an example. You are, you are having three friends in the back of your car, and you, they're sitting, you have, in the window you have Fatima, in the middle seat you have Amal, and in the other window you have Salama. So this is one group. Now, if you go somewhere, they get out and they go back in and then they move around where you have now Amal on the window and you have Fatima on the middle seat and Salama on the other window, then that's another grouping altogether. If they change once again and you have now Salama in, in the first window and you have Amal in the middle and Fatima on the other side, then this is another group altogether. So even though they're the same three people, every time they shift around, you're creating a new group. In combinations, we do not care how the smaller group is organized. In permutations, we do. The arrangement of the smaller group is important. Okay, so for our the calculator, we are going to be looking at this section here. There you have NPR. So you need to do shift, multiplication. Okay, and that up. Okay, let's see the example. There are 12 students in the classroom. The teacher must pick five students among the 12 to send a group of representative to the conference, just like we had in the one exercise for combination. Now, how is this different? Suppose that in addition to selecting the group, the teacher must also rank, organize, or arrange each of the students inside the little group of five according to their presentation ability. So now how the smaller group of five is arranged, organized, is important. Before, we did not care. So for this, we have 12, which is the group of students, and we have permutations for the smaller group of five. Why are we having permutations? Because the smaller group of five, the students in the smaller group are being ranked. How we organize them is important. So how do we do this in the calculator? The first step, remember, is 12 P. Five. First, you enter the number 12. Then you enter, you, you click shift, and then you click in multiplication. So shift or darab, I think is in Arabic. Third, you press the number five. And the fourth step, you press equal. You should be getting the number 95,040. You see, that was a very different number when we got in combination, okay? Again, just like before, if in the calculator you were to do this backwards, if you do 5 first and 12 second, you're telling your calculator to get um, smaller groups of 12 
out of a group of five, which is not possible. So the calculator will give you an error. And if it gives you an error, then that should be a, a flag for you that something is wrong and that you need to go back and change your numbers. Okay? All right, ladies. So this is, or gentlemen, this is what we saw. When we have a combination, we had 12 students and the teacher was making groups of five students. And that was it. We did not have any other uh, details about the group of five. We just said, we were told how many different groups of five are there possible. And they're different. There are 792 groups that are possible. We had a permutation when, suppose that in addition to selecting the group, the teacher must also rank, organize, or arrange each of the students inside the group. So when the smaller groups of five are being organized uh, in a particular manner, then you have a permutation. And if you have a permutation, you have 12 P5, and that makes it a total of 95,040. You see, combination and permutation, permutation are way bigger because every time you um, change the, the arrangement inside the smaller group, you're creating a new group, a new permutation. So as a quick summary, ladies, we have the rule of multiplication, and you should be able to see when you need to multiply, when you're trying to pick one item from two or three groups, like we had the, the exercise with the bias, 20 abayas and 12 shaylas. If you're going to wear an abaya and a shayla, you pick one from the 20 abayas and one from the shayla. So you're picking one item from groups you multiply. You do combination when we're making a smaller group out of a bigger group, but we do not care how the smaller group items are organized. And this is the formula. Now, we have a permutation when we're making smaller groups out of a bigger group, just like in combination, but we do care about how the smaller group items are organized. The group the smaller group, how they're organized inside, how they're ranked, they're organized, they're um, placed together um, in the smaller groups. And that's when you have a permutation. And you do, you use the formula NPR. Thank you so much. I hope this has helped clarify some of your doubts. Have a great day. Bye.